With a more crimson mix, I then darken my mid some more. There was so much detail within each segment and so much tonal variation that this was a long process, but a fun one. Hi, I'm Anna Mason. Welcome to this episode of Nature Studio TV, the place to be to create a nature-connected creative life. In this mini class, I'm gonna demo painting a really big realistic raspberry in watercolor. Let's take a look at the process I went through. I began with a light pencil drawing, which I made as accurately as possible to put me in the best position to start painting. I began the painting by placing some pale yellow paint with a tiny brush to the little hairy shapes on each section of the raspberry called styles. And I darkened the mix with some brown as I went down the raspberry to reflect the fact that the lower section is in shadow. With that dry, I created a really watery red colour which was light enough to be a match to the lightest parts within the raspberry, mainly where the raspberry curves away at the right and left edges. Because this was so pale, I could paint it right the way across the raspberry as it would be able to sit underneath subsequent darker red layers. I made sure to paint around those styles that I'd painted before. While that dried, I applied a pale layer of a couple of shades of green to the sepals, the leafy part at the top. Again, I was matching to the very lightest versions of the colours that I could see there. Next, I applied a second layer to the raspberry everywhere except the lightest area of highlight. I used a red that was a little bit more purpley with a crimson colour. The mix was still pale but not as watery as before. The raspberry isn't especially shiny but it does have lighter areas which have a furry sort of texture to them. This stage requires plenty of concentration as I had to work around those lighter areas. But working this watery and pale means that if I do make a mistake and work into an area I don't need to, I'll be able to lift off the paint with some kitchen paper with no issues. I'm stippling my brush strokes at this point to start to capture the rough visual texture, that furriness, to the surface of the flesh. Once that was dry, I went straight in with the darkest tones or values to the raspberry in the shadows and crevices between the segments. I used a thick mix of a crimson heavy red then stippled it to create lots of visual texture. I lightened the mixer touch with my brighter red as I moved up and to the left of the raspberry. I was really just picking out the darkest areas so that I had the light and dark ends of the raspberry's tonal range in place. With that done and dried off, I began to work on the mid-tones. I used a milky consistency mix similar to the one I used in the second layer and applied the mix to everywhere that seemed this dark or darker. Applying this mix as a glaze over the top of some of the darkest tone areas if I could already tell that they would need to be darkened some more. I stippled as I applied to create the fuzzy texture and paid really close attention to make sure that I didn't apply this mix into areas that were lighter than it. Again I varied the hue of the mix to match the brighter and lighter top left of the raspberry. It was now so much clearer that all but a few of my highlight areas needed to be darker so I used a really pale mix like my original one to subtly darken all those lighter areas. The layer underneath was dry so I didn't get much in the way of bleeding from the darker areas as I overlapped into them. I let that dry off and then I went back in with a milky mid-consistency mix to darken the mid-tone area some more, going down to my smallest brush to capture plenty of detail too as there was a lot of texture to these segments. With the mids and highlights darkened, I returned to add another layer to the darkest tones in a lot of places to bring those back into balance. As I worked higher up the raspberry, I adjusted the hue of the darker areas to brighten it some more with some of my opera rose in the mix. With a more crimson mix, I then darkened my mids some more. There was so much detail within each segment and so much tonal variation that this was a long process, but a fun one. At this stage, I felt I needed to take a break from the raspberry itself and paint in the green of the sepals to give it context and also help me to see how much darker I could afford to take the raspberry flesh. With that painted in, I could look back at the raspberry itself with fresh eyes and see that the little yellow styles needed to be darker, so I darkened them now with some yellow ochre and my smallest brush, adding a second layer to those that needed it. Then I darkened the darkest tones again, adding even more details as I went and changing up the colour mix to match the different areas of the raspberry. Then I darkened the lighter areas again whilst also adding more texture, before adding yet more detail with the tip of my tiny brush, neatening up and defining the yellow style some more as I went. 
It's this level of detail that gives the raspberry the realistic wow factor. Then I used some brown paint to add shadows to the styles in a few places before making my final little details. And at last, the raspberry was finished. A full length video class of this raspberry is available now with Nature Studio membership. If you've enjoyed this mini class, please subscribe to Nature Studio TV. Then pop over to naturestudio.com where you can sign up for a free class and find a whole heap of resources to help you capture the beauty of nature on your paper. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Yes! <laughs> Got skill, I didn't realise. Yeah, baby! <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Splat into the painting. <laughs>